So my name is uh, Lawrence Brackmo, and I'm a member of the kernel team at Facebook. I've been interested in uh, network performance for a long time, specifically with TCP performance. And the main lesson I've learned during this time is the value of good testing tools. You know, they are priceless. And what I mean by a good tool, I mean a tool where you can specify a scenario very easily. You can run it. You can collect that data you need to, bring it back, create some initial output that you can look at, and then be able to analyze the data in multiple dimensions. Uh, the second lesson I learned is that it's very difficult to write these tools. <laughs> so Netesto, the network testing toolkit, is my attempt to do this. And it's proven very valuable for me. And the remote is this. OK, so what does it look like you know, to run under Netesto? So you have a set of servers, Netesto servers, that are running the Netesto service, you know, a daemon that will accept connections for the Netesto controller. Okay? And by the way, a host can be that controller and a server at the same time. Uh, in a particular test, a subset of the servers will be clients, and others will be servers, test servers. That means that the clients will initialize connections to the test servers. Okay? And once again, the same host can be both a test client and a test, ser test server. Uh, the type of uh, flows that, I that it supports right now are based in NetPerf. So in particular, TCP stream and TCP request reply. It would be very easy to add support for UDP and others. I, don't, I haven't done it because I haven't had a need to do it myself. Uh, and then the test controller just talks to the, the test of servers and give them commands, start flows, collect data, et cetera. Um, so there should be some warning. Uh, and the test grew organically. I did not sit down one day and, and thought, you know, should design a really great testing tool, do a beautiful design, and do a beautiful implementation. It grew organically. I needed to do some basic stuff. I implemented it. I did a more complex stuff. I added those features, and it grew like that. And because of that, it reflects some of my idiosyncrasies. Uh, for example, right now, you know, it's only been tested with IPv6 because at Facebook, all our production servers do not run IPv6. Most of them do not even run IPv4. Um, I have a graphing tool. And anybody sane who have used one of the existing tools to do graphs? On the other hand, somebody like me, a long time ago, uh, when I was developing TCP Vegas, I needed to create really complex graphs that I wanted to also be able to publish you know, in, in uh, uh, conferences or uh, other places. And for that, they need to be uh, uh, based on PostScript. So my graphing tools is actually written in PostScript. So very powerful, but it's quirky. Um, the main tools are written in Python. And originally, I envisioned writing the test scenarios in Python. But then I ended up actually implementing a simple test scripting, scripting language for two reasons. One, it was actually easier to, to write the scripts that way. It was, I thought it was cleaner. Secondly is that as we start to share test scripts, uh, it's safer to do it with a more limited scripting language as opposed to sharing Python uh, programs that can do a lot of other things intentionally or unintentionally. Um, so in general, the Teto is set up as two different directories. One you store in your Netesto servers. The other one you store in your, in your client. Uh, you will start the service, Netesto py minus s. If you want to, you can also create a, a log. And then to run lo locally, you just give it a script file, and it will just do everything. So what does the Netesto client do in general? You know, there are commands to do test setup. So for example, you could use uh, NetEM to introduce delays in the experiment. You can use uh, queuing disciplines to uh, reduce bandwidth and test you know, different buffer sizes at, at the bottlenecks. Uh, it also collects initial information before and, and then at the end of the test. So these are typically counters, 
like Netstat, SNMP, SNMP6, but it also collects, for example, the output of syscontrol minus A, and also the output from ETH2. And the reason to do that is that many times after you run an experiment, you're analyzing the data and you see something unexpected. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that there was not something set up on the system that affected the results. And because I save all the state information of the system, I can look at it and, and make sure that nothing weird is going on. And then we'll start flows and we start the flow collection information. So we use NetPerf to start the flows. It will use SS to collect information about the flows, congestion windows, RTTs, retransmits, uh, and it actually runs ping to be able to measure delays. Uh, when the test is finished, it will locally process a lot of the information, create a key value per file. All the data is copied back to the controller. The controller aggregates these individual test key value files into an aggregate. It creates also a pens, a comma separated value file with, with the results. And I'll show you that what it looks like in a second. And then it creates graph for RTTs, you know, good puts, congestion windows. And it can also uh, process the CSV file to create more complex dimensions of the results. And most of this is done automatically. You just run the script and everything happens by magic. And the script can run like hundreds of tests. You just let it run and you don't worry about it. Now, what about security? Uh, you know, we're running a service on these machines. Uh, other people, you know, other machines could need to hook up to, you could hook up to it and maybe try to do something bad. So there are some mechanisms to, for security, but they are limited. One is by using a, a test script language, at least locally for the controller, uh, it cannot do any really weird things, right? The script language is, is, uh, can only do network kind type of wor workload, right? Uh, the servers also have a white list of whom they will accept connection from. So that prevents anybody else to connect into them. And also the command, the remote commands going to the Nutesto servers are very limited and well specified. So for example, the get data command to copy the data back, uh, you do not tell it what to copy. It will only copy the data related to the experiment. Okay, so you cannot try to use it to copy something else from that system. You know, you don't have that choice. So what does a simple uh, script look like? Okay, the first line says host, host suffix and then a domain name. And this is just a shortcut, so I don't have to use the domain name for the, when I specify the host names. Then source in lib is reading the default uh, macro library that I had written. Then I set some variables like duration of the experiment 60 seconds, duration number two. So this script will run two stream tests. Uh, the second one will start within the first one. So we'll wait some, like 20 seconds, start the stream, and then end it. Because I want to see the dynamics. What happens when you're running one flow and you start another one in the middle? Uh, you set the condition avoidance BBR, for example. And something that is not here, but it was before, I just didn't copy it. I, I'm also setting the queuing discipline to be the Scherfer queuing, queuing discipline. And then the last command is the run specifies to run a macro. The comma one, the one could be any number, it tells you how many times you want to run it. And the reason you want to do that is that with packet-based networks, small perturbations can create very different results. So many times you want to run it multiple times. And most of my macros are set up that they introduce small perturbations in the experiments automatically. Uh, okay. So this is, for example, a sample output. Uh, on top is what the CSV file would look like. Uh, the experiments have individual names. If you click on the experiment name, it will show you a summary that includes the good put and congestion window graph plus other graph, RTT, et cetera. And it has, I only, I'm only showing a few of the fields that I usually collect. I collect a lot more than that. Uh, so this is the same graph, but individually, so people in the back can see it better. So this is the good put, right? We start one flow initially in blue, BBR, and BBR, every 10 seconds, it like decreases the congestion window to probe the, the network. 
Uh, then around 23 seconds, we start the second flow. Things look very cleanly. You know, they, they are achieving more or less the same bandwidth. The second flow ends at 43 seconds. And then, you know, so it looks very cleanly done by VBR in this example. And this is what the congestion windows look like. You know, every 10 seconds, more or less, VBR decreases the congestion window to probe the network. You know, it has a phase we adjust, and everything looks nice. So what did the macro look like that I ran? You know, it was a two-flow macro. Um, so it begins with the name of the macro, begin uh, the macro name. Uh, the experiment counter means, you know, just the next number for the experiment ID. Then I have like an if def preserver. So if I define the macro preserver, it will be run at this time. And I like to do this because, for example, I want to make sure that my experiments are not affected by some settings that are default in the system. For example, uh, send or receive buffer sizes, right? If we're, we're trying to do congestion control experiments, I don't want to pollute the results by having buffer sizes that you know, are very small or are very, you know, uh, do not really let the congestion control try to figure out what is the right rate it should be going. Then I start the uh, do server command that just collects the statistics initially. Then I do the same for the client, the pre-client. If the pre-client macro is defined, I will run it. Typically, I do it to set buffer sizes, center to see buffer sizes very large. Uh, I also have a, you know, if there's a TCP dump variable defined, I will run TCP dump on the client, and I will collect only the packets that are going from the client to the server. And I will collect as many clients as the TCP dump variable specifies. Right? So it's really easy to run experiments where you know, we can collect TCP dump, we collect congestion windows, and it's all almost you know, like transparently for you. Then you know, I run the client. I wait a random delay, typically between, like, between zero and one second. It will be uniformly distributed before I start the second uh, flow. So the second flow will start 23 seconds later plus that delay. And the reason I add this random delay is because if I run the same macro many times, I will get different results. Because those small perturbations of the start times will create significant different results. Uh, and then, you know, like, I collect the information at the end with a do server, wait a little bit, get the data. As you can see there, there's no specification about the data. The data is the experiment for, for the experiment we're running. And then, so this is what's running locally. Then I process the experiment. That would, you know, update the CBS file and create the graph and do all that. So this is uh, the same macro, but now we're running with 10 milliseconds RTT and only 100 megabits, oh, 10 gigabits per second. Uh, so in this case, you know, the behavior is a little bit different, as you can see. Uh, you know, VBR starts very nicely. When the new flow starts, you know, uh, you lose a little bit of utilization and then it starts playing around. But then at the end, something weird happens. When the second flow ends, the first flow stays low, right? Uh, you know, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, and I guess I should, sh should have shown you the big graph. Okay, so this is for good put, and this is for congestion window. You know, the congestion window for the first flow went down, and for some reason it stayed low. Um, and the vertical bars are retransmissions. So you know that at, in the middle when they were both running, there was some congestion. And if we look at the, uh, on this one, the last uh, field column is the retransmits percent, right? So there were 1.7 retransmits. 1.7% of the packets were retransmitted for this experiment. Uh, so, you know, I ran the same uh, script again, right? And that's why that's the value of the macro comma repetitions, right? And just with the small perturbation that happens naturally, I got a very different result, right? The first flow is doing beautifully. You know, it stays there. The congestion window does not keep growing, right? So it, I, I, unlike cubic, that we just keep growing it and you know, have buffer bloat, it stays you know, at, the, at a good level. Uh, but the second flow in this case uh, did not grow. 
right? For some reason, it, it assumed there was too much, you know, like it had already achieved as much bandwidth as it could, and it stayed low, right? Uh, so, for example, I ran this same script 25 times, and three of those 25 times, this happened, where the second flow just stayed low, you know, to, what is the rate? Uh, 124 megabits per second for that flow. Uh, so some people want to know what the cubic does in this environment, right? I'm not trying to speak badly of VBR. So it does badly too, right? The first flow stays up there, does really well. The second flow takes a long time to try to grow. So it also achieves very low bandwidth, right? It doesn't have enough time to, to grow its congestion window. Uh, part of this package also, it's a, a program called experiment.py that allows you to process the data into different views, right? So for example, for, the, so for this experiment, uh, and by the way, if you look at the experiment numbers, I run a lot of experiments on, on that day, right? Um, uh, so the CVS file is big, it has a lot of stuff. With the, you know, I, I, I use a scripting language also for this, that I tell that, you know, just look at these slides of the data, the, what I call the three stream to one test type, where the delay is 10 milliseconds and the bandwidth is 100 megabits per second, right? And then I tell it to, to plot the table. And once again, I also restricted the columns I was going to display just because uh, uh, there's not enough real state on the slide. But I also created a new column, which I call fairness at the end, that it is the ratio of the maximum rate and the minimum rate. So that gives me an idea about how fair uh, the experiments are, right? If, if the value is one, it's perfectly fair. All of the flows assume the same good put. Uh, the bigger it is, it means that the faster flow achieve much more throughput or good put. Uh, and then I can also create bar graphs. So this one tells me the number of retransmits with the bars, and the diamonds, the green diamonds, represent the, uh, the fairness and with, for both cubic and BBR. So initially, you know, there are very few retransmissions, but as we increase the load with BBR, we grow up to 15% retransmissions, right? 15% of the packets sent are retransmissions. Uh, the fairness starts, uh, you know, more or less okay for that many flows. Uh, but once again, as we increase the load, uh, BBR for this experiment turns out to be a little bit less fair, you know? the ratio between the slowest and the fastest is between four and five in the worst case, right? And, and that's a heavy load. That's 30, 32 flows per host. So there are three hosts. So that's uh, 96 flows total going to one server only, right? Okay. So this is a sample of the script to do the uh, table and the graph that I showed you, okay? Initially, I specify where the CSV files are. Then I select which rows to use. And by the way, the paper that is uh, being put on as part of the conference has a lot more detail about Netesto. Then I create a new column with a fairness. Then I tell it which columns to use. And finally, I tell it to write the table, and then I tell it to, to write a plot. Uh, I give it, you know, what is the on the X axis, do the instances. On the Y axis, on the left, do the retransmit packets. On the right one, do the fairness. And then do a series of, based on the congestion avoidance, cubic and BBR. Okay? And that's what created this graph here. And the idea is that as we develop scripts to run tests, we we'll also create scripts to analyze the data from those tests, right? So as new people want to use these scripts, They'll know, you know, I just run the script, you know, I just need to have enough machines uh, to be able to do it. And then I will just run the script to plot the data and give me all the views I want to see, right, for that script. Um, so 
Other things you can do, as I mentioned earlier with, with Netesto, is that you can use MediM to add delays. You can collect TCP dumps, and you automatically copy, copy them to the controller so you can look at them if you want to with Warchar. You can also set up queuing disciplines, either to set up uh, Sherfer queuing for VBR, or if you're using a Linux host as a router, you can use it to limit bandwidth and you know, try different uh, buffer sizes. You can also set sys controls uh, at the Netesto servers. But these are also whitelisted, so that you can only do certain things. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, Netesto macros that I have. The, for example, mserverrr will do multiple client, multiple servers, uh, request reply. And you can specify multiple request sizes. So for example, you could say, run you know, from three clients to two servers. So every client will send to each server and do three different flows with 10K, 100K, or one megabyte request replies. And you only need to specify one line to do all that. It will run, collect the data, copy it back, do the graphs, all done automatically. Uh, so you can also do streams. You can do uh, what I call versus, where you can compete to different clients, maybe set up with different congestion avoidances, see how they do. Uh, so for example, uh, I wrote also a TCP CA23 macro. So this runs the two flow and three flows uh, to compare the behavior of two or more uh, congestion avoidances. So what you would do here is you would specify a base congestion avoidance and a test congestion avoidance, and then the macro you know, you just specify that, you run the macro, and it will run two and three flows using the base, two and three flows using the test CA. And if you specify more than one test CA, it will do, it should do this for all the individual test CAs, congestion avoidance, BBR, RIN, et cetera. It will run two and three flows uh, using the base CA for the first flow and using the test CA for the other ones. So you can see how they compete. How does one BBR affect cubic or vice versa? Uh, in my experience, I also set up a Linux machine as a router, and then I use the QE discipline to set different rate sizes, queue sizes. I use NetEM to set delays, okay? And then I can very easily do a script with a loop where I can try, you know, two delays, 10 and 40 milliseconds, four rates between five and 100 megabits per second, uh, and then I have the loop, and then this test will do, the, the TCPCA macro will do eight runs. And then I have two and four, so that's another race. So it will be 64 tests with just that small script. Right. And if you add a comma after the, the macro name, then it will run a whole bunch of them. So let me, pa, 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 pa. availability. So there's an initial version there. Don't use it, it has one or two bugs. By the end of this, week, I will release the, the latest version uh, that, that you can use. And that's it. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> questions? Somebody has to ask a question. OK. Um, just a usability question. Uh, what would be the learning curve of this tool? How, how, would be the how, what? how much the learning curve? How, how much uh, time? So if you want to it? use the existing macros and its existing scripts, it's very easy. You know, it's like you actually just uh, install directories on the Netesto servers. You start uh, the program with minus s so that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's starting as a daemon. And then you pipe the script to the Netesto PY in your controller, and it will do everything, and it will create a lot of the output, right? So do you have a how-to or something like that? Um, it will be, there, there's something there, but I will update it, you know, by the end of the week when I post the latest one, so okay. that you can have a, a quick start. Thank you. Sure. So we're gonna put him on the penalty box for five minutes, then we're gonna talk to him. Uh, next speaker. Thank you. <laughs>